here we go. Today's topic is uh, what every lady wants to see in a man. What every lady wants to see in a man. What every lady wishes to see or wants to see in a man. Okay. So this uh, uh, is we started this morning, and I mentioned to you that the very first thing that a lady wants to see is that is to see a father, a father in a in a in a future husband or in a husband. Every lady wants a husband to be a father, a father figure in her life. Okay. Now the next thing that if, that every lady wishes to see in her husband or in a a uh, future husband or, or, <laughs> or already husband is uh, what I call security and protection. Every woman is desperate for security and protection. Security and protection. So for a woman to agree to marry a man, she wants to be sure that he will be able to provide for her that security. A lady, you know, the Bible tells us that women, as strong as they are mentally, and um, yeah, maybe internally, but women are so fragile as well. Women are so fragile. They are so... Um, the Bible actually calls women um, weak vessel, the weaker vessel. So they are like weak, weaker vessel. So what is a weak vessel? Let me give you an illustration of that here. Now, I have this here. This is a weak vessel here. Why is it a weak vessel? I cannot just throw it against the wall or throw it down. Like I would throw this down. I can throw this down anyhow, but I cannot throw this down anyhow. Why? Because it's fragile. It's fragile. It's a weaker vessel. So because it's a weaker vessel, I must always be careful. I must always wash out for this glass. I must always wash out for this cup. I must always be on the lookout. I must always wash out. I must wash the way I place it down. I must wash the way I, I, I place it down, the way I pick it up. I must be watchful the way I take it. So basically, especially when it has, when it's, it's full, I must take it like this with my two hands and must be very careful that I'm protective and defensive of it. So just the way, this is what is called fragile. Or let's, let me use another one here. This is also fragile. Because it's so fragile, look at the way I'm holding it. I'm holding it with care. I'm holding it with attention. So that it will not pour down because it's so full, and so that it will not be broken, so that I'm, I, it's not, you know, I, you know, I'm very, I have to be very careful. So when the Bible talks about uh, about a woman being the weaker vessel, God wants us to treat her just like this, like we would treat a very fragile thing, like we would treat something that is very delicate. A lady, every lady is very delicate. Every lady is very delicate, so she could easily be hurt, she could easily be broken, she could easily be damaged. And if you, um, and, and you know, this as the, the reason I'm holding this with care, this, this jar, jar here, is not just for it not to break, it might not break, but if I'm not careful the way I hold it, it will begin to pour down. You see, you see. What I will begin to pour down there, I will begin to spill it. And if I begin to spill it, it's going to mess up the whole place. So, the, so a woman, you don't necessarily need to be fragile towards her, only for her not to be broken or not to be uh, damaged. But sometimes you need to be fragile towards her, not to wound her emotions as well. You need to be fragile towards her, not to hurt her emotions. You need to be delicate and fragile towards her, not to uh, make her be broken, not to make her be hurt, not to make her spill water so, so that she doesn't spill out her emotions, she doesn't spill out her tears so that she will never cry. One of my, uh, one of my commitment to my wife is that I will never ever leave home 
if she's not smiling. That's my commitment. I don't ever leave home, even when I'm about to preach, even when I'm supposed to go and minister. And I'm, in, and I'm, and I'm a minister. So my job is to go ahead and minister every day. But I have committed this to my wife from the very first day that I will never leave my house if my wife is not smiling. I will never leave my house if my wife is not smiling, if she's not happy. Why? I must find out intentionally to make sure that she's a happy woman today before I go out. What does that mean? That is one of the very basic not just requirement of a woman, but need of a woman. It is a, not just a desire, but a very need. She needs the emotional security. So every woman needs, every second of the day, she has to be emotionally secured. So one is not just security emotionally, but emotional security is just one of it. So a woman needs uh, protection and and uh, what did I call it? Protection and what? Uh, protection and I wanted to say defense because I'm, I've written my note in Russian. So I don't know what I call it in English. Every woman needs security and protection. Yeah. Every woman needs security and protection. So she needs security emotionally. So why I'm telling her that I will never leave home without her smiling and without making sure that she is happy is just emotional security right i'm just trying to give her emotional security and protection i'm just like trying to let her know that you know you must be happy you must everything must be fine with you i you must be protected you must be uh you know you must be secured so it's emotional security and protection that is one emotional. Now, how, what are the other ways for us to give our ladies, our women, emotional security? Another way to provide emotional security for her, in my own case, the way what I've discovered in my own life is that, in my own marriage, in my own family, is that I must come to ask her, I must find out, except when I'm away for, for solitude. But if I'm not away for solitude, I must make sure that I call her three times a day, minimum three times, between three to five times. Not, not just calling, but I must touch her. I must you know, find a way to ask her how she is doing three to five times a day. Even though she's okay, you know, I could just easily assume that she's okay, right? Everybody assumes that, you know, everybody's okay when they are not, when they are not uh, complaining, but as a man, I want you to know, if you are a young man here, or even if you are not young, if you are already married, that just by asking how she is doing on a regular basis, that it's not about if, you know, if she, you know she's okay, why should I be asking how she's doing? It's not about you know or you don't know she's okay. It's an emotional thing. It's a way of giving her emotional security as well. Just by going to find out. But my, I, you know, I had lived in Europe longer than my wife. So at first, in our first uh, few years of marriage, you, my wife was always concerned. Why are you always asking if I'm okay? Why are you always asking uh, how I'm doing? Why are you always... No, why are you... Am I showing any sign of... Uh, you know, being desperate or destitute or uh, frustration or anger. Am I, why are you asking? Why are you always asking? Why? Everything is okay. But I've told you everything is okay. But, but later on, she got it. She, and she, she began to appreciate it. That, you know, she doesn't need to be frustrated. She doesn't need to be hurt or angry before I find out about her well-being. I just needed to let her know that I'm always here. I'm always there for you. I'm always here, princess. Princess, you are always secure. You know, I'm always here, just like security. I'm always here for you. I just want you to know. It's just like saying you are going out and you have your security with you. It's not because there is danger coming. It's not because, you know, there is any, you no know, any uh, problem that you are envisaging, but you must just, because it's, especially when you, anything could happen. So when you see your security there, it gives you an additional protection. It gives you an additional, uh, you know, peace. That's what you need to do for a woman every day, minimum. So if you are a man that wants to marry or you're already married, 
remember this, minimum three to five times a day. It's, it's, it's just a rule. Because if you are going to wait for your emotions or when you have the mood, because I used to do like that. When I have the mood, I will find out, oh, I will quickly call. But sometimes you don't have the mood because you are so busy and men are always so busy walking, doing one thing or the other. So you don't really, sometimes you forget. And, you know, women get angry when they hear that you forget. How could you forget to congratulate me? Or how could you forget, forget to greet me? Or how could you forget to call? Or how could you forget to, to find out how I'm doing? Well, you know, the problem with men is that men are men. Men who forget. Men forget. And men get carried away by other things. So, and then the woman will be concerned. So if you, if you don't want her to be concerned and worried that you don't love her and begin to doubt, and you want to put it in your schedule, you want to put it in your program, you know, it's better for you to put it in your program that I need to call three times a day or I need to find out, I need to approach my, 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 my wife or my fiancé three times a day, five times a day and find out how she's doing. I just need to go and approach her and, you know, talk to her and let her know that I'm here for her. So, so, so if you, you know, because if you, when you marry and you begin to let that go and forget about that and you don't do that, she will begin to worry and be concerned and she doesn't understand that, that you forget. Because if you tell a girl or you tell your wife that I forgot to call you, I forgot or I never thought about it, she's immediately thinking, ah, she's not think he's not thinking about me. And for a woman, you know, to be told that you forget about her or you forgot about her or you are not thinking about her, she's immediately thinking, aha, I'm no more his priority. I'm no more in his in his uh, schedule, in his in his in his list of priority. I'm no more important to her. Even though on the other hand, uh, when I told my wife that when my wife I didn't tell her, but she got to know <laughs> that I had my secretary on the phone, that was not with finding out how she was doing. With finding out how she was doing, I was doing that by myself. But I needed to do other things to give her emotional uh, stability and emotional comfort. You know, like, you know, write her a card every, 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 uh, is it every week I write her a card? Every uh, week I give her a, a, a bouquet of flower? Every, uh, you know, I do some other things like that. So every day I do, every week there is a new program, a new thing that I'm doing to, to, to just give her emotional stability and, you know, comfort, a sign of love and just rom ro romanticism and give her a sense of, you know, just romance. So, but that one, all those things I do, I do a different thing every day and a different thing every week just to, you know, to, uh, to make her, uh, married to life more, you know, uh, spicy and more uh, interesting. But then, <laughs> because sometimes she talks to my secretaries and I have different secretaries though. So, and then my secretary and my driver. So this time, the, my, she wanted, she needed my driver. She has her own driver, but she needed my driver. And then my driver said, I've got to take this thing or that thing. And then another day, you know, she wanted to, my driver had gone to get something for her. And she had always been thinking that I was the one going myself to get all those things. But, you know, especially if you are a busy man like me and, and you are, you are, you know, you are so busy. And so she was thinking that I was the one taking the car and going to look for a card for her. I was choosing the card. You know, I, of course, it's much more satisfactory for a woman for her to think in her mind that you are the one going to pick the card yourself and if you have the time if you have the time if you have the if you can afford it that's the best thing to do really for you to go ahead and pick the card yourself so for you to go ahead and pick the flower i used to do that initially myself but you know to be doing that all the time i just thought you know <laughs> first of all i could forget Secondly, I, I have my drivers, I have my secretary, I'm paying them salary, you know, they could remind me. And so what I did, I came for, I came, I came, no, I came up with my secretary with a schedule, with my schedule. So what we give on Monday, what we do on Tuesday, what we do on Wednesday, what we do on Thursday, what we do on Friday, what we do. So I we put all that, work that out together with the secretary and my driver. And so every Monday, she will get a flower. Every Tuesday, she will get a card. Every Wednesday, she will get another thing. Every Thursday, she will get something. And she was thinking that I was the one. <laughs> 
going to look for those things every day. I mean, I can't afford it. So, but I put that in the program. So, so she got annoyed. <laughs> She got annoyed because so that taught me another question. I mean, it taught me another lesson. And the lesson it taught me is that she is actually not interested in those cards, in the in the flower, or in all those gifts. She is more interested in the emotional attachment of my heart to her. And through those gifts. So through those gifts, she's looking at my emotional commitment and my emotional attachment to her heart to her that i'm always thinking about her if i'm going to get to spend two hours or three hours to get that flower it means i'm thinking about her so much and that's why i got that particular flower and she's looking at that flower and she's thinking that oh i was thinking about her when i was driving there to go get it but <laughs> so when she discovered that i was not home driving <laughs> I was not the one driving to go pick those flowers up and those those uh, perfume and all those things. So she was a little bit disappointed. Then later on, I explained to her and I told her, the princess, look, you know, either I will not do this thing at all or, you know, I have to put it in the program, you know. <laughs> so anyway, she got it at last. She said she was disappointed a little bit, but at least she got the idea and she commended the fact that, okay, at least... Okay, I'm not so happy, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but what I'm trying to tell the men is that you guys, you know, work it out. Anyhow, it works for you. So if it works for you better to, uh, to, to, to be going to do it yourself, it's okay. But if it doesn't work out for you to do it yourself, get help or put it in a program, put it in a in a calendar, put it in your daily calendar, put it in your schedule. It. Because some people say, well, why should you schedule it? That was another problem I had with my wife. Because she was saying, why should you put it in a program as if I am, uh, I am, I am some in, in, inanimate uh, object? Why should you put it in a program? Because she wants the emotion, you see. She wants me to be always, she wants to think what is better for her is for her to think that I'm, I'm thinking about her all the time. And that's why I was going to do it. But when she got to know that I actually put it in a schedule and in a program, she didn't like that so much. But later on, we also came to the conclusion that, look, princess, this is real life. Oh, and in real life, we get busy. We, I mean, things happen. Sometimes I cannot leave the office. Sometimes I have people everywhere. I'm, you know, and you know your husband, I'm just a, too busy and I'm a people person. So anyway, so we settled that as well, that it's better to, to put it in a program than not to put it anywhere at all and not to do these things at all. So I'm just telling you what ladies like and what ladies will not like. But one thing you have to do is that you've got to do something to give her that emotional security. But this is just emotional security, right? But we're going to talk about other security that she needs as well. Obina says, flowers isn't for Nigeria girls. Okay. Okay, flowers isn't for Nigeria girls. Mm. Okay. Um, flowers isn't for Nigeria girls. Okay. You see what I've just... This is another confirmation I'm hearing here. I will come back to the flower issue. Okay, let me deal with the flower issue first. Okay, if flower is not for Nigerian girls, you know what flower, what flower really means... In European culture, it's not about the value of the gift. It's not about the gift. They are not seeing flower as, the, as a gift as such, as the value of it that is going to cost $100 or $50 or $20. But they are, they are seeing more and they are looking more at the attention behind the flower. So what really matters is the attention behind the flower, not the, not the value of the flower itself. The value is, that's why she, my wife was concerned and was particular about the fact that I was the one going to pick the flower. So the time I spent to go pick the flower, the, 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 the fact that I thought about going for the flower, the fact that I, mm, you know, that, you know, I will actually bring it home and the, the romantic aura that it forms, the ambience of romanticism and the, 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 the statement it makes that she's important to me or that I just want to give her some gesture of attention and love, that is, that is all what, that is what, it, what matters. So maybe in your own culture or African culture or Nigerian culture, maybe flower might not be the thing. But look at something, because you cannot just be buying, you know, a telephone every day. You cannot 
just be buying uh, a book every day or buying something valuable or expensive every week. But so maybe, you know, something that is not expensive, but that will just show your attention to the person. So that is about the attention. Okay, now let me let me read, let me read a comment for you here. Shigo, Shigo is saying, which is a confirmation of what my wife said as well. So this is a confirmation here. Shigo says that if that flower <laughs> and the gift that you are bringing to your wife is mechanical, then it's not worth it. So that's just to show that you know women are women everywhere, and women are pro you know they have the same feelings and the same emotions. And you know she she got it. She that's exactly what my wife said. But you know, you know. But in my own case, I was able to explain to her uh, what you know the issue was. And you know, she said she's not she's not as excited as she would have, she would have been if I had been picking the things myself and if I had not put her in a in a, in a schedule. If I had been doing all that, she would have been more happy. But but you know, you know. <laughs> I understood that she, she decided to cope with me that way. Uh, uh, um, okay, now, those are just emotional stuff, right? But when we talk about protection and security, when we talk about protection and security, we are not just talking about emotional security and protection. So those things I'm saying, those are just to make her feel nice, to make her feel you know, at home in our own house. But the bottom line is this. Let me tell you this. Listen closely to this. The, the whole idea behind this is to let her know that she, that there is nothing more important in your life than her. <laughs> Only don't go and put, don't go and put her over God. Though. Don't go and put her above God. All right. But the idea, the whole idea is for her to know that you know, you are number, she is number one in your life. So, so bottom line is that. So it doesn't really matter what you do and how you prove that. But the thing that the lady must know when we are talking about protection and, and security is that she wants to know that there is no competition, that there is nothing that is more valuable to you than her, that she is the most important thing, person in your life. You, you have, she must know that she's more important than your job. She must, you must prove to her that she's more important than your work. You must prove to her she's more important than money. She's more important than your ambition. She's more important than any other thing that you have in your life going on. So, and how do you prove that to her? She needs a constant, you don't just say, but I told her that one time, she should know now. But no, she, she needs affirmation emotionally. That's what makes women different from men. She needs emotional affirmation, emotional confirmation all the time. She needs to be told. And not just be told with your mouth only. So you need some actions to affirm that. And it is because of those actions that you need, that is why those things that I was talking about are necessary. Okay? Now, apart from emotional security that you give to a girl, so you must give her... More than emotional security. You must give her, you must do anything possible to let her know that with you she will never suffer. Now, of course, you know, we know things could happen in life, but at least make that statement. Make her know that with you she will never be in need, she will never suffer, she will never, you know, she will never be troubled you know she wants to know that she will never be troubled she will never you know you know be in need you want to so much affirm her you want to not just emotional now both financially spiritually you want to give her a covering you want to cover her in such a way that she is so secured for example let me give you an example when i met my wife she was having uh what do you call it? We in Africa call it pus, like a pus was coming out of her, for, for, uh, from her eye. So it was like a growth, like a little cyst and growth here in her, just under her eye, just in her eye like that. So she went and did it and did an operation uh, in Ukraine here, in U Russia we call it Yeshmen, Yeshmen, Yeshmen they call it. So it was a growth, growth like this inside, like, like a pus inside of it. 
So she did operation first time and they removed it. And when I met her, she actually had a plaster on her face. No, after I met her, a week after she went for that operation or two weeks after. So she had a plaster in her face. So I went to meet her after that operation. And okay, we prayed together, we were together. That was the first time I was meeting her after I proposed to her. So then after that, the next time she came, maybe about two months later or six months later, she said the, uh, the purse or uh, the growth had come back to her eye. Oh, okay. And it went back and she went for operation again. And this was leading to our marriage now. And after the operation, after another two, three months, the thing came back again. So I just told her, Princess, I mean, you know, we had our, maybe I don't think I was calling her Princess that time, but she was just my fiance that time. So I just said, Princess, you know what? Forget about this thing. You know, I want to let you now know that it is not by accident that I'm in your life. I want you to just, I want, just want you to, to, you know, I just want to, you to leave this thing alone with me. I take responsibility for this, your growth right now. I take responsibility for that pause right now. So I said, I am coming. <laughs> so before I went, I went and prayed very well. I fasted. I fasted like for a week. I prayed. I went to look for faith literature books. I went and fortified myself very well. I, 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 I read books about faith. I, I fortified myself. I established my faith. I, and I told her, you know, you know, this thing, I am going to solve it. Doctors cannot solve it. They have already proved to us that they cannot solve it. They have already done operation two times and nothing, the thing is not being removed. I now want to tell you that I'm a man of God. So, 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 I, so that, what does that mean? Even if, even if the thing has not worked out, right? It's still a kind of support for the girl. And it's still... You know, a lady must have that kind of security. A lady must have that kind of protection, that kind of, mm, you know, protective edge. She must know that there is somebody in her life, right, that is so much there for her, that is, you know, washing over her like a father would do for, for his daughter, okay? You know, that. so a lady wants to marry because she needs that security and protection. So I went to her, to her city. I, I was living in another country. She was living in Russia. I was living here. So I went to her country and we met and I prayed for her. You know what? What Russians could, I mean, what doctors couldn't do, what nobody could do, because I had prepared and I've had God for it. I prayed and I command the thing to remove, to, to, to go, to be removed. And you know what? The thing disappeared after a week. After the thing was removed, the thing never came back till today. Till today, that thing never returned because I took responsibility. So, uh, and for her, that gives her a kind of assurance. That gave her a kind of, you know, you know, protection, a kind of confidence that she is covered, that she is protected. And I've already told you the story of, you know, so that is more than emotional protection now. That is more than emotional security. That is like, uh, more like, um, you know, is it spiritual? It's, of course, our spiritual security is from God, but a lady needs to know that her husband, that she is marrying somebody that is going to be there for her. In fact, I will tell you something that even my friends and even her friends were saying, you have all this, she had a plaster in her eye, as if she was blind, you know. She was having this plaster all the time. And I have the photograph. Even to, to today, when people see the photograph, they say, wow, this was before you married? I say, yes. Before you married, she was carrying plaster like this in her eye? I say, yeah. And you, you still married her? Because I loved her. You know, that is what I had spoken about the first day. You must, bef bef before you approach the lady, you must let her know that it doesn't matter what will happen to her, either good, bad, or ugly, if you have given her your word, that you are going to be there for her. So if, when she began, she had that problem in the eye, it was my opportunity. <laughs> it was my opportunity to test myself and to prove to her that I will really be there for her. That is what a man should do. That is who a man should be to a woman anytime, any day. Now, let me tell you another story, which I had shared one day here. You know, we were not having children for the first three years of our marriage because we didn't want to. 
you know, who are realistic. And I don't believe in people having children the very first year or the very second year of their marriage. I think it is a little bit unthoughtful to, to have done that. It is unthoughtful, I think. I think that if you, especially if you are not too old, if you are still young, and, you know, if you didn't date, like, for three, four, five years, but you actually only, you know, if you are, I mean, you know, if you are newly wedded, give yourself time. Give yourself another two, three, four years to just live together without having a baby. There is wisdom in that. Because if you begin to have a child immediately or to have children immediately, you don't really get to know each other to the end. You don't get to know each other. You don't get to study each other. You don't get to know, you know, each other's likes and dislikes and, you know, specifics and things like that. So it is wise to actually wait two, three years without having children at all. So that's what we did. Now, the downside of that is this. After three years of, uh, you know, doing birth control and all that, then the fourth year we decided to have a child and so just being educated people so we said okay before we begin to have uh, to go uh, have pregnancy i mean to be pregnant let's go and check out uh, check up first let's go uh, uh let's go and uh, to the doctor and go for a general check up so i went for a check up and she went for a check up then she came back and she, i couldn't i came back from office i couldn't i couldn't believe who i was saying i couldn't recognize my wife Hey, 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 trouble don't break. Oh. I was, I, I, I couldn't, I never even knew that she could ever become so gloomy and so depressed and in such a bad shape. I never knew that a, they could, a, a human being could be changed overnight like that. She was so down. She was so depressed. What happened? The doctor said she would never have a child. Why? They said, okay, there is one diagnosis, then the second diagnosis, okay, was it? no problem. Let's go and find another doctor. We, found, we went to find another doctor. That one found another problem. We went to find the third doctor. They said, yes, you will never be able to have children. <laughs> okay. For me, I just told God, well, uh, if this is the way it's supposed to be, I'm going to prove myself faithful to you and I'm going to prove myself faithful to her as well. But I was also telling Satan that, Satan, you will regret this, you know. You better give that child as fast as possible because if you don't let that baby come, I am going to double my effort whipping you and going after you in a bad way. And if you don't let that child come, if even my wife, I'm going to, she didn't want to do ministry that time. I'm going to equip her. Two of us, we are going to be battering you from every side. We are going to just be going after you. You are going to regret it. Oh. We are going to go after you so hard that you will be forced to let our children go. So, but I told, but you know, that was what I was saying. And I told her that as well. But, you know, being a man, and I know that I don't, I, I cannot believe how that, uh, that news brought so much depression and bad mood to her. So I, I really wanted, I was not even concerned for the children anymore. I, you know, let's leave the children question alone. What about you? Let's save you first. Let's, let's rescue you first. Let's, <laughs> let's, I must rescue her. I must return her back to herself. So herself. I talk, talk, talk. It was not helping. <laughs> God help. You know, <laughs> then I said, okay. So this day I woke up this morning. I just said, what should I do to give this lady peace? Eh? I said, okay, I don't even need children anymore. Forget. She said, but she needs it. The people will not understand. Our family, our family. Okay. I said, okay, if that is the case. <sighs> so I came to her. I said, look me in the eyes. Look me in the eyes right now. I said, princess, I prohibit you right now from worrying about this question anymore from today on. I just prohibit you from worrying. Or even I prohibit you from thinking about it. It's not your problem anymore. This one, it has become my own problem with God. If God called me, and if I am his servant, it is now for him to prove it, either true or not. So I'm telling you, princess, please, this is no more your problem. Just let's assume I am the one who is, who is, uh, who is who, who, who is important? I'm the one who is barren. I am. It's my problem. I am going to forget about it. Though it's not your problem anymore. 
I just prohibit you. I ban you from thinking about it. And I said, if this thing is not solved, though, you know, it's my problem. So don't even say it as your responsibility anymore. And I went right from that night. I came from the office. I said, princess, don't look for me. I'm going to look for God. I am going on adventure with God. I'm going to resolve this problem. I'm going to resolve it from with God. Either I am going to get an answer before I come back, or I, we are going to come back and have a child immediately, or I am going to come back with a word. God must come and reveal himself and tell me something about this issue, about, the, about, about, about our child. So I went down, I went out of, ta, of, of, the, of the house. I went and get, got myself an apartment. For a week, I was not drinking, I was not eating, not, I was just drinking water and, you know, just Bible and music and, you know, just me and God. Then I did it for another week. And uh, then God spoke to me, gave me, you know, the award for my children, for my child, for my children, gave me a revelation about the, the child and I, you know, and all that. And I came back home. Two weeks later, we were pregnant. So the question was resolved. So what I'm saying is that it's not about either the result came or it didn't come. But the assurance is what I'm saying. A man must be able to give that kind of assurance to the wife. So even if we didn't get able to have a child or we, the, the, the child never came. But what I'm talking about right now is that security. Is that protective edge. Is that Mm, security that she needs to know that she's secure. Even though I don't have a child, yet I'm secure. Even though we are not going to have children, yes, I'm secure. I'm secure in this man's love. I'm secure in this man's you know, protection. I'm secure in this man's acceptance. I'm secure in this relationship. A woman needs to know that she is secured. A woman needs to know that she is protected. A woman needs this protective edge, it needs this security at all times. So you must do everything, even before you marry her, to assure her of your security, of, of our security, of the fact that you are there for her and you will always protect her and provide for her this solid assurance, this, this unfinishing faith in her, in her, your relationship, in, in, in the security and protect, protection that she needs to be more comfortable and, you know, and confident in her family. Now, that is another form of security and protection, right? Let me tell you another form of security and protection that I think a, wo a, man, a, a woman needs in her family. A woman also needs financial security and she also needs financial security and protection. A woman needs that financial security and protection. Financial security and protection. Now, what, 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 what do I mean by this? Can you imagine that as a pastor, I know this for a fact. I even have couples like that in my own, in my own, uh, in my own church right now. That women, where in a marriage where women, you know, are so afraid to have children because, for example, she, the lady, one lady in particular, told me. They have been married for 10 years. And she said, I cannot afford to have a child for him. I said, why? Is it because you cannot have a child? Or you don't want to have a child? Or, or you people don't want to have children? She said, no. He said, no. Um, I am, I am, you know, we, I, 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 I'm, I cannot afford, I cannot, I cannot just afford to get pregnant right now. Why? Because if I get pregnant, I have to stop working. And if I stop working, he cannot, his own salary alone or his own income alone will not sustain us. I cannot afford to get pregnant. Ten years. They have been married for ten years. The man has not done his own work to give this lady security now, financial security now. So that she will be able to even have children for the two of them. So that she will be able to have confidence enough to be pregnant. She couldn't, this lady can't, couldn't, cannot even afford to have a child. So she's going to be 40 years old and she said, 
I know I'm getting old, I'm going to be 40, but if I do it now, I can do it, I can risk it, but there's too many women that she, she said, I know too many women. You know, there are so many foolish, I'm sorry for that woman, please don't be annoyed at me, but there are so many foolish, silly women that I say, oh, God will provide, God will provide, you know, something, something, you know, something will happen, God will find a way, he, uh, he will just, you know, some people will help, or something will happen, so... That is foolishness because you say, okay, God will help or something will happen. And then you got pregnant. You don't have vitamin to take. You don't have, you don't, you, you cannot go for your medicals. You cannot uh, be, you know, you know, you cannot have the clothing that you need. You cannot buy the things that the child needs. You cannot live in an apartment. You have, to, you got pregnant six months later or nine months later. They are chasing you from your apartment and they're you know, telling you to pack out and, you know, why should you just rely on the chance? Why should you just rely on chance when you could, you know, you have to do what you need to do? So, so there are a lot of women like that, that because their husbands have not provided financial security. The husband has not done everything possible from his own side so that she will never need to work. You know, if you, I, I, for me, what I teach my members here is that if you want to marry, Think first. Make sure you do your adequate preparation. Get ready first. Be ready enough so that if anything happens that your wife will not be able to work or she cannot work or she gets pregnant so that you will not go into crisis immediately. So that you will not go, in, go get into trouble that, oh, now we're in crisis. We, we have to do abortion or we have to do something. Get ready before. Think about these things before you even approach a woman. Think about these things before you even propose to a woman. Don't just use all your money to do wedding. Don't just use your money to do party. You know, think about what will happen after the party. Think about what will happen after the after the wedding. Think about how will you will leave if she if she will not work, so that you know that you know you are capable of providing for her and of giving her that financial security. And I know that there are so many other children as well. I mean, there are so many other families where, even in my own church here, where uh, they have one child and they cannot have the second child. Why? Because the man might want to have the second child, but the lady is afraid. Because she remembers what she went through when she had one child. But there are, of a, like I said, there are also some stupid women who don't even think about the consequences. They are saying they are relying on God. And then they will suffer, those children will become drug addicts or alcoholic or failures or destitutes or, you know, you know, poor people, despised uh, people who have complexes and all kinds of problems because these women didn't think. And so, and I have other examples also in my, in my family, I mean, in my church here, yeah, where every year they're giving birth. Three children in, a, in, in three years or in four years. Five children. Oh, no, we don't have five children in this church, in this country. But you know, sometimes people have that. But in our place, you have maximum children is three children. But, but how can you have three children when you have just one bedroom? How can you have three children when you don't even have a car in Europe? So don't, in that kind of situation, I mean, I had women come to me and to my retreat, to my HMT that I do for women and for, for families, the lady will be crying, crying profusely, profusely and weeping and screaming that I don't have a life anymore. I don't have a life anymore. My life now is feeding, bread feeding and, you know, cleaning the, the this baby and he, he doing this. And from morning to night, this is the only thing I see, kitchen, you no know, washing, diapers, or, or what do they call it? And, you know, all that and all those things. That is the only thing. Before I married, I was happy. I was, you know, I was beautiful. I was a praise and worship leader. I was a minister in the church. I was a business person. I was a student. I had an interesting life. I lived a life that was interesting. I, I was loved. I saw, but now I cannot even see sun. I cannot even see green light. I cannot even see anything because the, the husbands cannot afford to get a house. Uh, house help they cannot afford to you know to, to to get a car they cannot afford to get all the help they need they because they are just getting pregnant without thinking 
So that is that is uh, that is exposing the lady. That is exposing her on very many levels. That is why when they tell when they 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 they, 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 uh, they criticize women that women are after money. You know what I tell my girls in the church? What I tell my women, the women in our church, I told them, please look for wealthy husbands, not wealthy, well-to-do husbands. So please, let anybody call you anything they want to call you. Make sure it's well-to-do. Make sure it's self-sufficient. Make sure that he will be able to provide for you. If he's not well-to-do, if he's not self-sufficient, let him go pack his load and go and look for another one that doesn't care. But it is your life, oh, things will get worse. Things will get much more difficult. Things will get rough. Even with money, things will get rough. Talk less or without money. And, and, uh, and, and don't be afraid of public opinion. Don't let public opinion put you in prison. And the, in the, don't, nobody is going to be living with you. Or nobody will be pregnant with you. Now you, alone, you yourself have to carry that pregnancy by yourself. Nobody is going to be you know, feeding the baby with, for you because you need to eat properly to be able to have milk and to be able to feed your baby. Nobody is going to do that for you. You will be doing all those people talking, all those people saying you are not a woman, you are, you are greedy or you are materialistic. All of them will be in their own house enjoying the comfort of their house while you will be crying by night. You will be crying by night by yourself. So these are things that are needed for you to assure, you know, to your wife that she will never have to go through these troubles. She will never have to go through these pains. That she will never have to go through this, you know, cry, crying and weeping by the night in the night. She will never have to carry all the load and all the problem and the responsibility on her own head and alone. She will never have to, you know, to, to be desperate and be, be in need and be suffering and be in pain and be destitute and the you know debtors and 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 uh, and uh, you know people that is owing money and looking for you and then you cannot sleep. You cannot. I'm sorry. If you if you have read the book of Charles. I mean, liar, liar shouts or in Kiro books. Those things shouldn't be happen to women. Those things, women, no woman should go through what those ladies went through. Unkiro Ojima do and liar shouts, Emmanuel. Nobody should go through what those people went through. Nobody. And part of the problem is that there was no man around or a man that is around is, was not well prepared. Not well prepared to protect a lady from those kind of... That is why I started this message by saying a lady is a weaker vessel. It's a fragile verse, vessel. A lady is fragile. A lady is delicate. A lady should be protected. You have to look after her, watch after her from every side and make sure that, you know, you are, you are very careful. You must be protective of her. You must, you must be protective of her. You know, just like you cannot throw this bottle now, just like I would throw this cloth and just throw it anyhow and place them. You see the way I'm carrying it? You see the way I'm carrying this thing? You see the way I'm put, placing it down? And with care and with attention, with that is how you should be carrying your lady. That's how you should be carrying your wife. That's how you should be treating your wife. With so much care, with so much attention, with so much attention to details, with so much protective edge, with, with so much care. Yeah, that, you know, you, and, and it's not just so that it doesn't break, but also so that nothing pours out, so that the things inside will not pour out. So that's the way we should treat a woman. Not just so that she's not broken or she's not dead, she's not dead or she's not sick, but so that she will never be unhappy. We will never get her to a place where she's unhappy or where, where she's desperate. No lady should ever be in that kind of situation, especially if she's married. If she's married, that is what to be protection and security means. Being, being, being protected and secure means that she will never have to worry. She will never have to be troubled. She will never have to think, how will my children go to school? Can you imagine? Can you imagine a lady that somebody told that they, I love you, you know, you know, I care for you, I marry you, and then she is the one who has to think, how will her child go to school? 
So it's better not to even have that child in the first place if you if you are not sure that you'll be able to send elementary, you'll be able to send your child to school, school. That you'll not be able to buy your child's uniform, that you'll not be able to give her some food to school. If you are not going to be able to do that, why marry? Well, why even have that child? Live your own life. At least don't bring disgrace and shame to your own self. Be on your own. Be satisfied by yourself. Is it by force that you have to marry? Is it by force that you have to, you know, go have a man sleeping with you? If you need a child, there are so many children out there that are praying for God to send them parents, that are praying that God should send them uh, mother and father. Go, if you, if you are self-sufficient, provide for your own self. Go and get a kid or a baby from, from, the, from, from the orphanage or from the foster home and, you know, adopt a child. And give that child everything that you can afford to give him. Don't, don't go and tie your life down with any man that is so irresponsible that you will lose all your status, you will lose all your security, you will lose your protective edge, and you will just become a destitute in this world. Just because you need a man to be around you. So I just hope that men are here today to hear me. I just hope that men are here today. listening to this message and I just hope that this message will go a long way to, you know, that not just men who are already married are here, but I hope that young men are also here. And I even think that we could give this to our children. I think that we should give these teachings to our kids, to our uh, daughters, for them to know and think critically before they enter into any relationship. And I think we should give this teaching to our boys as well, so that our boys will never let any girl uh, go through these things because of their irresponsibility. Uh, I think uh, we need to, you know, we just need to tell the people truth of what is up, what is waiting for them uh, in life if, if, if they are not adequately prepared and if they are not, uh, uh, if they don't know what, uh, what they should know. Don't just marry because God said, though. F carry out the facts. Even if God said, wait, if after God has spoken, let him get prepared as well. Don't just say, God said, so everything will be okay. No, no, no. God said, God, God has said his own. A human being also must do his own part. It's not just God that should do his own part. Human beings also must do his own part. And until he has done his own part, don't rush to do anything. Don't rush to go anywhere. Don't go into marriage if you are not sure that you'll be able to have enough security and enough protection from the man. The man must be there to give not just emotional security. He must be there to give moral security. He must be there to give spiritual security. He must be there to give financial security we shouldn't be afraid of that word he must be there to give financial security if he's not having that let him grow up let him grow up let him grow up and when he finishes growing up then let him come we will talk after that besides that you don't want to turn your life to an experiment you don't want to turn your life to an experiment you want you know you, you want to live at least a decent life to keep on living a decent life, you must make sure you do your due diligence, you, you cross-check, you, 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 you know, you, 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 you cross-check all the factors. You, you, you know, you cross-check all the factors. And you must make sure that, yes, everything is satisfactory to you before you go into a relationship like that.